All right, how's everybody doing? Good. Yeah. I think I know all of you, right? right yeah. All of you? Yeah. Okay, so what I want to start with is I want to have a volunteer. All right. Yeah. You don't even know what you're doing yet. That's good. All right, so you have 30 seconds, and you're going to sing or rap. What? He's, this is the best candidate. What are you doing? Caleb, what are you doing? If you decide to do that, there's a prize after that, but you don't know what it is yet. Do I get to rap? Yes. Can I put a beat on for him? Yeah. Do you want to give him a beat? Yeah. All right. Yeah, you got a beatbox right now. No, no, no. No phones. Can, can you beatbox? I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, let's go. You'll get part of the prize. Okay, I'll just be watching this. Right? Oh, okay. we're we're gonna gonna walk you. I don't know where you're going to walk in. Oh, no, 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 do the pencil, do the pencil. The pencil? No, hold the pencil. Hold the pencil, hold the pencil. Okay, I'm a little bit scared. Yeah, a little bit. No, 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 Whenever you start, I'll start. Okay. Come on, buddy. Uh. Hey. All right. <laughs> Wait, boy. Come on. Um. Let me give you the um. I'm at KSA and I'm chilling with Brady. All the high speeds and I'm doing one eighty. Hey, yeah. Mm. Hey. <laughs> About to learn some physical stuff so I can look like this guy because. Um, I want to be white. Come on. Um, that pencil uh, thing is super fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, when's the beat going to be over? It's because I'm trying to retire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, 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 good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here, here. What? <laughs> Wait, no, you're part of the prize. I'm the, I'm the producer. Is it my part of the prize? Dang it. So, the reason that I wanted to start with that, the reason that I wanted to start with that, is because what just happened there is everyone had an opportunity to take a chance, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens in life. That's what happens in business. Like, whoever acts with speed, whoever acts quickly, and whoever is willing to put themselves out there, like, he was up here, and he was like, Man, I'm kind of nervous. I got some stage fright, right? But he still decided to do it anyway. Yeah. And the people that are willing to do that are going to get what they want out of life, right? But you have to act fast. Because, like, I myself have gone through this where I was presented with opportunities, and I was always told, like, think things through, make sure it's exactly what you need to do. But those who get what they want act the fastest, right? So that's why I wanted to start with that. So. Good job, Dave. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, I could have been, it could have been a better rep if I had. If I had it was kind of rough. Like, if there's I, like no, ten listen, seconds at the start that was good. After class, after class, see me, and, and I'll have Caleb put on a beat and a rap for you for a rep. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I want to go through a little bit of my own story, my background, and then we'll get into like some Q and A type stuff. Um, so for myself. I started, like as a kid when I was younger, I loved to play sports, I loved to do anything that was competitive or that had like a ball involved. I just, that's what I loved, that's what I enjoyed. Um, and around seventh or eighth, maybe ninth grade, I started getting very interested in baseball specifically, where I wanted to figure out like, how, what could I do to get as good as possible for baseball? Because I wanted to play, like my dream was to be a professional baseball player. And so from that time period, I just got extremely obsessed with how can I figure out everything that I need to figure out in order to make that happen, right? And I carried that on from eighth and ninth grade through high school, uh, played baseball in college. And as I was playing baseball in college, I started to put out information. Like you guys have TikTok, Instagram. What else do you guys use? I don't have anything. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> you don't have anything? You got the rap. Um, but yeah, so like that type of stuff for me back then, it was... It was some of that, but it was also like I created a, a website type deal, and I would put out blogs, I would put out articles on what I was doing, what I was learning, not necessarily thinking that would ever lead to a business, but more because like I just wanted to share what I was learning. And over the course of that process, as I got closer to graduating college, I had more people that were reaching out, wanting to learn what I had learned or wanting me to help them because they saw what I had done. So 
what I took away from that is whatever you guys are doing, if, if you want to turn it into a business or even if you don't want to turn it into a business, if you just want to like help other people, it helps to share what you're doing with other people because that means that you're building connections with those other people. What, what eventually happened from that was I was putting up content, I was putting up information. I started my own business um, during my senior year of college and took that, I was running it for about one or two years. And yeah, I mean, it was pretty tough. Like I was, I remember Devon, we were talking about your salt and sugar in the Kool-Aid, right? You're like, we, I had to do salt instead. Um, so during that first year or two, I was probably making like a thousand dollars a month and had to fully support myself, like rent, food, all of that. Um, so that wasn't an easy time, but I didn't really have any information on how to make that better. I was just throwing things at the wall and seeing what stuck. <clears throat> but what ended up happening was I did that for about for a year or two. And then because of the content that I was putting out, I got offered a job out here in Missouri because I'm originally from Michigan. Um, so I was able to take a job out here, work at a training facility and continue to grow my business through that. Um, so, but if I wasn't putting out and I wasn't sharing that information with other people, that opportunity never would have presented itself. So again, it's like we started here with, it's basically putting yourself out there, whatever it is that you're doing, put yourself out there and that's what creates opportunity for you. Um, so I continued doing that for about six months, didn't end up working out because we had different visions and I took two or three months kind of revised what I wanted to do. And then I started DAC performance and health, which is what I'm doing now, uh, in 2020, I've been running it for about three years and the income that started about like a thousand dollars a month is like 20 X since then. So it's just, it took a lot of time to learn all that. Right. But it was a necessary process for me to go through. And like when you guys are starting things, it's going to be very difficult at the start, right? Because you don't know anything, but just having the courage to go through that, it's going to pay out on the other side if you don't stop and if you keep going. Um, so I want to talk about like business stuff to start. Is there anyone that wants to start their own business? Okay, what? I use your whiteboard now. So, what businesses do you guys want to start? I don't know yet. You don't know <laughs> yet. Yeah. You just know that you want one. Yeah. Anybody have a good idea? Or just any idea that you think would be a fun business? Let's do our bookstore. Tech business. Yeah. And what was the other one? <laughs> do any of your markers work? <laughs> I think like the a couple of work. One? It sometimes works. Where are they the supposed to The bigger ones work more. It's kind of tight in there. Okay. All right. Tech business. And what was the other one? Bookstore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Yeah, okay. It's it's not. You are such a liar. Use the, use the red one. The red one? The red one works. I think I only work. like one of them works and it changes every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like they rotate. <laughs> it's like Do they have good days and bad days? Yeah, exactly. There we go. Okay. All right. Tech business, and what was the other one? Bookstore? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's like the base of, of what you might want to start, right? What type of income would you want to generate with that? Money. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me a number. A lot. Like, like, like a, a, a specific number. Like gross? Yes. Like revenue. A mill. Okay. In like three years. I think you could make we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll just say a million. Okay. Great. And then what what would you want to generate with your bookstore? Uh, half a mil. So Why less? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two mil. Tech seems to be more efficient than a bookstore. Okay, we'll go with, we'll go with five hundred. Okay. Think about what Amazon is. All right. So when you think about what you want to be able to generate out of that, what is what's a combination of numbers that you can multiply? And get to a million. Just give me one. Like eighty a month, eighty k a month. So give like eighty eighty k times what gives you a million? Like about twelve or thirteen. Is that, is that right? I don't know. <laughs> it's like twelve and a half. Okay. Yeah, it's like twelve and a half. Okay. So what is, let's say that you could get one person to give you 80K. What's, what's like a product or service or offer that you could have that someone pay you 80K for? Like big servers for companies, for data storage and stuff. Okay. 
Good. So to get to one million, you need to do that for 12 and a half people, right? What about a bookstore? What? Give me some combination of numbers that would give you to 500K. Uh, like what's a, what's a product or service that you could have or offer? Um, we'll start with that. <laughs> um, what, what, would the, what would the price be on it? Okay, let's make it $15. How many books would you have to sell to get to 500K? That's a good question. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, in a bookstore, it's like not that much. In a tech business, you can. Yeah. But, like, how much does it tell them to become possible? 33,000. Uh, 33,000? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so do you think that's do you think that's doable within like a year? Uh, probably. What's 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 another comment? What's another thing that you could offer? Um, a cafe. A drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the cafe. Cafe. Yeah, you could add a cafe on <coughs> and okay. make food. Everyone loves food. food. Okay, so how much do you think? <clears throat> How much do you think you could generate in a year from the cafe? Um, or let's just say per day. Per day. Um, <coughs> well, it, let's say it's just drinks for now, and each drink is twelve, thirteen dollars or something. Okay. That's expensive for me. No. That's <laughs> <laughs> like average. How many drinks would you have to sell to get the five hundred k? 38,000. Is it? I don't know. Maybe. It's we'll see. probably around. You're not that. It's a little bit more than 33,000. It's like. We need specifics. Um, we need the decimal to a million places. <laughs> you don't need the decimal to play. 50. It's $41,666. Did you write that? Did you have $41,000? I have $41,000. Okay. Or er, 41000 yeah. So you need to sell 41,666 drinks to get to this, right? Yeah. What if we take and we do half, or let, let's say let's say we aren't able to get 33,333 people to buy a book at $15. Let's say we're able to get 10,000, right? So if we get 10,000 people, $15, that's what? 150K. Yeah. Okay. So that takes us to... Uh, a little under a third of our total. And let's say for this we go, let's say we get 20,000 people. What's 20,000 times? 240,000. Okay. Um, Add those up and we get what? 390? Yeah. Okay, so we still have 110. Give me another combination. What else could you add to your your bookstore. We'll get back to the tech. Uh, CDs. CDs. Yeah. Like a music section. Yeah. Music oh, section? Vinyl. Yeah. CDs vinyl. Like at uh, Barnes and Noble, they have the music section. Okay. Vinyl. We also sell vinyls. Vinyls can go for like $25 a piece. Depends okay, let's music. do vinyls then. Depends what music you want. How many of those would you have to sell to get your 110K? How, how much is Twenty-five dollars. Yeah. New markers do not work. <laughs> we need to invest in new markers. Yes. The purple one works as well. It's about five thousand two hundred and forty people. Okay. I'll get you a new marker. Sir. <laughs> There's the like five markers I haven't tried yet. The purple one works. Don't pull it too hard because it will fall. Which happens <laughs> often. Oh yeah, yeah that happens very often. No, it's not five thousand people. It's two. Oh, for for 110k or for the 500? For 110k. Oh, it's definitely that then. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> so that gets us to that. So that's like reason I wanted to go through that is like if you guys want to. So if you have an idea for a business and you have the revenue that you want to generate from that, all you have to do is figure out what the math is on that. Like literally, just sit down and figure out what the math is and figure out what you could offer. 
that would produce that amount of income for you, right? So if we can finish this up. I have one. This one's good. Oh. The, oh, there's a black one that works. It gives that purple sauce. <laughs> It'll be a backup. All of them are black ones. And this one doesn't fit. Is this one like? It's okay, just put it on the guitar. <laughs> sticker? Okay. So let's go back to this one, Lycan. Yeah. What else could we do? Um, Give me like one product or service and how much would it cost? Uh, fixing computers, $250. So, <laughs> selling computer parts? Like, that's like, you don't mind? Yeah. That's like so to get to a million, how many computers do they have to fix? Store well, I'm fixing them, I'm fixing them, not selling. Give me one more. Yeah. One more product service offer that you could have. Um, tech support. How much do you think you charge on average for one person? Probably like 40 bucks. Okay. You can also make a YouTube channel. How many people would you need to help? <laughs> uh, a lot. Yeah, like what's the actual number? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably going to be. It's like 50,000. 25,000? Well, Let me get the calculator. If you round it to fit the 40 to 50, then it'd be easier to do math. It is 25,000. 25,000? Okay. I'm a math genius. It's a lot of tech support. Okay, so that's a lot of people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we can do the same thing that we did, that we did here. And this is why you, know, you want to have like multiple different offers. If you're thinking about starting a business, because to just do like one thing, like let's say that you could get one person to give you a million dollars, that would give you a million dollar business, right? Yeah. But that's only one time, and at the start, like you have to have a lot of trust and a lot of credibility built up for someone to just hand you a million dollars for whatever your product or service is. Yeah. Right. So you want to have multiple different levels of entry for people to enter, because even this, like forty dollars, fifty dollars. Eighty thousand dollars. That's different levels of entry for people to be able to interact with your business. Yeah. Right. And if we go over here, um, what do we have? We have fifteen. Yeah. So this we like. We would probably want to find something where okay, let's say someone can buy a bundle of books. We offer bundles of books, and they're it's one hundred fifty bucks. That gives you different levels of entry for people to enter at in your business. So this is all great, right? But in order to in order for people to know that you have a business, like how do you get people to actually know that you're there? What do you need? Uh, right, so but you need people's attention, right? You need, yeah. you need people's attention. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's just screwed up my whole, my whole vibe here. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to cycle through 50 They work for me. I think it's just your... It might be the way that I dress Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're going to need attention. So if we just take, let's say we take, um, let's say we take this one where we need forty thousand people to do this. How many people do you think you're going to have to have that know about your business, that know that you have this, to get forty thousand people to do it? At least, at least fifty thousand. <laughs> no. I, right, so I was, so on my, I can't pull it up right now, but so like on the Instagram that I have, I can see how many people see it per month, right? So like last month, there's 1.5 million people that saw it. Accounts reached or people that know that it happens. And that doesn't mean that 1.4 million people like interacted within my business, right? Mm -hmm. And at the start, this was something that I greatly underestimated most people do, is how many people you have to have that know about what you do to get them to invest in it like for whatever number you want. So 4,000 people, how many people did you say? Millions. You think? Like how many million? Probably Five or more. Yeah, so. Set up a billboard. That's, it is the way you're writing. Yeah, it's me. It's me. Right. <laughs> so, based on experience, yeah, you probably need you probably need four million people, okay. to at least to know about what you're doing, to be able to give you two hundred fifty dollars. To have four thousand people give you two hundred fifty dollars. So you need that attention. So like, what are different ways that you guys could generate attention? You already mentioned some advertising. Billboards. Um, Social media. That's true, yeah. Also it's just, like free advertisements. Also, yeah. just adding like special events to it or anything that would attract like a crowd. 
like in books or of course you can add text in there. It always attracts people. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Like, and, and there's different there's different ways that you can generate attention. Like you can have in-person things, right? Special events where people are actually physically there, which is good because you want to have you want to have proximity with people. Like the more they actually interact with you close up, the better they're going to get to know you, and the more they're going to be willing, yeah, to invest in that. What's up? Proximity. proximity. Yeah. It means like closeness. So right now, the proximity, we have this given proximity between me and you. If I move closer, we have greater proximity to each other, right? Go farther back, it's farther away. So like the closer that you can get, the better. Um, so we have like in-person things that we can do, and then we also have online stuff that we can do as well. You can also set up like some sort of gimmick like, that you have to your store. That, like you give like what? You give like there's so there's this mattress company called Purple Mattresses. Is this a real company? This yeah. Is a real yes. company. Okay. Yeah. It's a real company. Oh, yeah, um, do they only sell there's, purple there's, mattresses. There's, okay, so they, they, they sell this. They sell this technology, but they at one of their stores that I went to, uh -huh. they hand out these like miniature purple mattresses. They're like squishies, but they're like the exact same technology. And I got like uh -huh. four of them. So you could you could hand out like stuff like that. And that would draw attention. They like, like to throw eggs yeah. on their mattresses and stuff. They what? They like to throw eggs on their mattresses. Okay. Yeah, and they don't break. You can also make like, a website. Yeah. Yeah. You're allowed to go on the vents with this one, of course. Mm. Yeah, so all that stuff is good, right? And and use we want to actually, yeah. You can also have seasonal things. Seasonal promotions. Mm -hmm. Seasonal promotions. That's all. It's good though. Yeah, that's that's good. Like all this stuff is used to generate that attention, right? Yeah. And we actually want to use all of it because, um, like, all of it has different uses. And the more people that you can get to have eyes on your business, the better it's going to be for it. So, like, we want to do, we don't want to just do social media. And even within social media, we don't necessarily just want to do Instagram or just do TikTok or just do Snapchat or just do YouTube. Like, we want to do all of that because those are essentially like TV channels. And if you can be on all of those more people are going to be able to see what you're doing. And if you add in all this other stuff, like you add in a website, you add in um, in-person stuff, like you add in flyers, you add in all that stuff, that's all just different ways to generate attention. Because remember, to get to get this number, we're going to have to have like 100 times the number of people see it as the number of times the people that you want to invest in it, right? Um, okay, anything else on any of that? Any specific questions on any of that? Okay, good. What else do you guys want to talk about? Or is there anything else that you guys want to talk about or have questions on? <laughs> How many times did you fail before you started succeeding? Uh, I mean, yeah. no, <laughs> plenty, lots. So one of the things that happened for me during, like during, when I wanted to become a professional baseball player, obviously that didn't happen, right? I, I failed in that. And so what happened for me during that is like I worked extremely hard and did everything that I knew that I could do to try to make that happen. And it didn't happen, right? So for like for two or three years after that, I kind of had this um, <clears throat> like almost a, not aversion to hard work, but it was like I would, I would work hard, but I was like antagonistic against that or I didn't. Do you guys know what antagonistic means? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what aversion means? Yes. No. Yeah. Like aversion? So, aversion means like... To avert from something. Yeah, like to not want to go towards it. Turning away from, kind of. So like, I, I worked very hard. It didn't work for me. And so I thought like, okay, working hard isn't necessarily a good thing because it didn't give me what I wanted to get. So so after that experience that I had, if I, if I don't process that experience, that creates like an aversion because the expect it didn't meet the expectation that I had. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's that time where I had to learn, like, I had to learn how to actually get past that and, and like move the needle again. Because what happened a lot for me when I was in, in baseball and when I was in training is like, if something wouldn't go the way that I wanted, I just be like, okay, I just have to work harder or I just have to do more. And I want to actually take and like take inventory of, like, if, if we look at these. Right? If, if, if I was building the business, what I would have done is, let's say that I need 40,000 people, but there's only there's only 20,000 people available, just like I couldn't get more than 20,000 people. 
what I would have done is been like, I just need to work hard and try to get like create new people. And that's just, it's not possible, right? I wouldn't, I wasn't willing to look at like what are different things that I need to do. I was just like mm. keep trying to bang my head against the wall doing the same thing. And so it took a lot of time for me to learn that doesn't work. And you have to, and that's why I think this stuff is so important. Like you have to actually sit down and figure out what are all the components that make up what you want to do so that you know everything that goes into that and so that you can actually make <clears throat> progress versus just like not understanding why you're not getting better. Makes sense. But I mean, yeah, that happened a lot. Like it happened in baseball, it happened in, in the, the first business that I had. Um, it happened when, like when the first business ended, before I started DAC Performance and Health, there was like two or three months where I, I didn't really know what I was gonna do. I was, <laughs> I was making cold calls selling like a medical device that was made in Germany. And it was during COVID, so like everyone was shut down and no one could do anything. So like during those two or three months, I was like, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. And that's, it's a tough spot to be in, but it's also like when you, when you're in those positions and you're able to get yourself out of that, now you know, I've been in this position before and I know what I need to do to be able to get myself out of that. So you have, it builds confidence because you know like, you know that you have what it takes to get yourself out of that. And every time that you have that success, you just build those wins for yourself that no one else can take away from you. Like even if you get hit with something massive, like if I were to get hit with something right now and my business were to go to zero, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. I know how to build this up again and I can do it quicker because I have like tools and strategies to actually do that. Interesting. And like if you had your goal of like, for example, a million, mm -hmm. and so you start out your first year, you made like, one sale of 80k and then you fixed a few computers and you made like 130k yeah what would you do to continue to grow that into a million yeah so then it comes down to all these things that we said of getting attention right you need more people to know about what you're doing and you need to provide very good service to the people that you're that you're providing that for so like if you if you take and you give one and you do one person like you charge them 80k and you're able to do what you want to do for them and they have a very good experience with that like you you advertise what you can do and then what you deliver is actually greater than what you advertise that you could do they're going to be extremely excited about that right so they're going to just because of that like naturally go and tell other people about that and that's how you grow and expand like if if for my business for debt for DAC performance and health a lot of what i do is rehab so like if an athlete has some type of major surgery like elbow, knee, shoulder surgery, <clears throat> I'm going to do rehab for them, right? Yeah. Through, through, what, through how I advertise or through how I put up content, they have a general idea of what I do and the results that I can get. But if, when they actually start, what they get is greater than they expected, now they have, like if I'm working with a professional baseball player in the Dodgers organization, he has three other people that he knows that are having elbow issues or having shoulder issues, and they're like, dude, no one else does it like this guy does it. And then they're going to refer you. And that's how you expand and that's how you grow. That's one way, right? Kind of word of mouth through that. But then also using those other things to get more attention. Because even when I'm getting word of mouth through the people that I'm working with, through their friends, I'm still working on putting out and creating the content that I put out like through Instagram, right? I'm still going, <clears throat> going to do that to try, to try to generate new interest, not just from the people that are getting word of mouth because I want as many people as possible talking about it and to know about it. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> what else you guys got? Um, Were there any like sport or questions like, yeah, Devon? Um, <clears throat> can we go, teach you how to play baseball? <laughs> yeah, can I teach you how to play baseball? I know how to play baseball. Yeah, I played like for like six months, but like I kind of stuck. Well, so, I play people and figure out I play, I play pitcher, but like I hit the bat like every time. <laughs> <laughs> I sign up for I like one good pitch every game. We both sign up. One, one pitch? Yeah, and the ball would get hit on the one good pitch. Okay. Like, that, that's not a good pitch then. Well, I mean, like, I didn't hit the player, so I'm not a good pitch. pitch. Uh, a lot of yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of time okay. though. Like, did you just start? I mean, I never. I mean, we're not. Yeah. We both signed up for um for football at the public school. Mm -hmm. Or not football, baseball. Well, yeah, like, football. I mean football the year, yeah, this is hit people. But... Yeah. <laughs> but baseball, we both signed up for baseball and we both kinda suck. 
Okay. Well, I mean, had you had you ever played before? Yeah, I played T-ball in the second grade. Was that it? Yeah. So did you expect to be good? He's really good at wiffle ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just it takes time. Yeah. It takes a lot of time. So just so you know, I push with them a lot. That uh -huh. like you're gonna fall down a few times in life. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Because. I mean, they'll do tests and they'll be like, it's the end of my life, yeah. you know, if they get anything wrong. And I try to like really push that errors happen. I mean, so. yeah, when it comes to baseball, like the first school that I went to, I had to walk on. Like I didn't have, I wanted to scholarship offers out of high school, but they weren't schools that I wanted to go to. So like the school that I eventually got into, um, I had to walk on it. So basically, do you guys know what walk on means? No, no. So it basically means you're not... When you graduate high school, you go into the fall at your school, and players that have scholarship or that already accepted will be on the team right away. So I didn't have that. So what I had to do is they had like a three-day, three-day camp essentially for people that wanted to try to walk on, and they would take you through different things. So they would take you through hitting, they take you through throwing, through running, fielding, all that different stuff, right? And I didn't, like, no one made it in those first three days because of. Pretty much no one ever does that. It's just something that coaches have done. Um, so what I ended up doing was I found a local hitting facility in the area, and I didn't know this, but the pitching coach at the school that I wanted to, get to play at worked at that hitting facility, and he had seen me coming in every day, getting better every day, like actually getting better. It's not like I was just there, right? And after a couple months of that, that's how I eventually got onto the team is because he's like, he talked to that coach. He's like, look, you need to come in and watch him play or watch him do what he's doing he came in and that's what eventually got me the spot on the team so like it wasn't it's not like I just walked on and or, or walked up and like was really good at it It took a lot of time for me to be able to get to that point right and the second school that I went to eventually I got a scholarship for that um, but it was in no sense easy getting to that point like it basically comes down to you have to have whatever your intent is like <laughs> This could be a business, this could be playing a sport, this could be a relationship you want to have, this could be whatever it is. Like, you just need to be able to set your intent on that and then know that there's going to be a bunch of, I mean, arrows or whatever you want to call them that come up. And it's like, you just need to keep going through those and actually figure out the mechanics or the physical aspects of how you get through those. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? <laughs> we were going to do a lot of, like PE before you came. Gonna do what? We were gonna do PE before you came and we saw you. So we did have the idea of just inviting you to do PE. <laughs> but Kayla told Kayla told us we had to go inside. Wanna but. play four score with us? <laughs> we can do that for a little while if you guys want to. Yeah. I do have one idea I'm like a question. Does this only have to do with this, or this, can this like also do like careers and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Right, or... Yeah, it can do with anything. So like the, the first thing to understand is you yourself are a business, right? Because you have like the money you have, you have the, the connections you have in terms of relationships and friends, right? You have your ability to communicate, like that's part of your business. A business needs to be able to communicate their service. You need to be able to communicate what you're about, right? So. Like, it starts with you being a business. Do you have, like, a specific career or something that you want to go into? Yeah, right. What? A writer? Yeah, I'm okay. going to write all my books and all that stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So, like, what... Do you have a good idea of what goes into that? Well, you do need to, like... We want to get it out into bookstores, which... We have someone right here who's going to want to make it. She's going to have a bookstore. <laughs> so I can just send my books. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I just need to make lots of books, and I need to also like make sure they're like very attention-grabbing and very good books. So I just need to write it really well, yeah. and that will really attract the crowd in, and that'll be like a really good plus point for me, and as well as for Yeah. Yeah, so like I'll add on to that, too, is... Um, in order to figure out how you write or what your style of writing is or how you actually communicate because this Like I started writing articles and stuff back when I was in early on in college, so I mean I've been doing that for probably like 10 years or more because even in high school I, I, I took a log and I would put out on a forum like everything that I was doing so I was I didn't know it But I was basically practicing writing practicing communicating what I was doing so for you as a writer It's probably going to take a lot of quantity 
are basically like a lot of practice writing books before you get one that's actually really good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you, while you're doing it, need to think like, this is the best book ever. And like, just you're thinking that over and over and over again. And over time, that's going to get better. As long as you have that intention of like, like you said, attention grabbing or whatever, whatever it is, whatever kind of writer you want to be, like you're continually trying to move closer and closer and closer towards that with every practice book or every practice chapter, whatever it is that you write. Eventually, it will become the best book ever. Yeah, like if that's if that's your intention, and, and you just keep going with that through whatever pops up, that's how you create that. We have but, an author coming as well. So awesome. And he. Yeah. He will tell you a lot more about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And he does it on the business side as well. So. Yeah, that's cool. Um, cool. Any other like questions, more? Mark? Can we introduce you to Poison Ball? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I really want to play with you. <laughs> to what? Poison, Poison ball. ball. Poison Ball? It's like volleyball, but like not as hard. You catch it, and then you have to throw it over, and if it hits the ground, whoever it hits the ground closest to is out. Yeah, and the only okay. way to get people back in is one-handed catches, sure which the only mm -hmm. people that can do that is Caleb and Avon and then Luke, who's nine, out, that catch? nine out of like 11 times, like it, or two out of 11 times. Why would you remind me of this? <laughs> <laughs> you can make one hand two out of 11 times. What are you talking about? We, we can play a little bit of Poison Ball if you guys want. This is a random yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. yeah teach your kids. <laughs> 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 That's not true. That's not true. All right, let's show them to the field. Okay, but do you guys have any other questions? <laughs> I feel like there's more important things that hit, Wait, though. That, yeah, that, yeah before we just, if there's first. anything that you want to ask. Guys, this is like, like our Grant Cardone. This is yeah, like Midwest's oh, Grant Cardone. Like, well, I, I don't know if I feel that far, but thank you. We're going to ask well, questions on the field. Yeah. Well, well no, but right? It's not, but it's not like the same thing. Oh, well, you can but. ask the questions in the class, and then you guys can play on the field. But let's make sure we have no other questions about, like, the work that it takes to get to that point. How, how did you start the, how did you start deck? How did I start it? She was first. She actually How do you Is it Maya? Mia. Mia? Okay, Mia. How do you figure out what you want to do exactly? Because I still have no clue. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting one because for me, I always, I don't know, like, have you had something that you want to do since you were a kid or are you just, are you not really sure? Uh, I did, and then I stopped doing that. What was it? Art. I wanted to be an artist, but now I don't really want to do that. Okay. Yeah. Because I just like drawing. Yeah. But you don't want it to be like a career or a business? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, like, if you don't know what you want to do, you essentially have to go and try a bunch of different things mm -hmm. and figure out, like, and understand as you try a bunch of different things, like, there's probably going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't click. I mean, for myself, I've always kind of known generally what I wanted to do. It, it's just, which I'm grateful for, like I always kind of knew a little bit. Um, but if you don't, like literally, you, you can just like take a, take a calendar and like set up, okay, every, once every week I'm gonna go and try something that I've never done before, but uh, that I've always been interested in. And like literally sit down with your calendar and write out like, okay, this week I'm gonna do this, this week I'm gonna do this, and then actually go do it. Versus kind of like just thinking about it Right, because when you put yourself in, when you put yourself in the experience, you actually figure out what it's like. Because for me, I always thought that I want to have like a in-person training facility where like I train people actually on site. But when I got to that, I was like, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. And so I kind of, I understood then. Okay, this isn't the. I still want to be in the same business, but this isn't this isn't the exact route that I want to take. So there might be something that you really like, think you'd like to do, but once you, you get in it, you're like, eh. Yeah. But the only reason, the only way to know that is to go do it. Yeah. yeah. Devon? Oh, <clears throat> so. <clears throat> <laughs> um, like, when you started in Jack, like, yeah. how did you do that, buddy? Like, how did I do that? <laughs> well, like, normally when people say, I started a business, it's like, it's like starting a YouTube channel. Like, how did, yeah, so when I first started, it was, it was mostly Twitter. Um, it would have been like 2017, 2018. So it was mostly Twitter where I would put out, like I would have, so I had a, a website or a spot that I would put up blog posts that I would write. 
I would share those on Twitter, but then I'd also be just like talking with people on Twitter that was in this that were in the space that I was in, which was baseball at that time. And you just like you find people that if you're the type of person that is going to start a business, I guess you find other people that are going to be like that too, because there's several several other different businesses that are in the same space that have grown really big, and I've known the owners of them for like 10 years, just because we were all at the same place at that time. We were all fairly small at that time, but we all had like similar interests and similar goals. So it's just like you naturally gravitate towards those people in the same places. Um, but yeah, so like it started with me just putting out content there, getting to know, I lost the one marker that worked. <laughs> getting to know like all people in that space and then just getting other people to know what you're doing. Like it's literally, cause that's one of the questions that I get asked a lot is how do you start? You just, you have to start and do something and do that over and over and over and over and over every single day. Like just do something every single day that relates to what you want to do. So, so you got bigger and then you built a facility? I didn't build a facility. There's a facility that was built and I got asked to come out and run it based on, there's a person that I knew through <laughs> Twitter that had known me because of the content that I was putting out. And he knew someone in Springfield, Missouri that was putting up a new like merchant clubhouse facility. It was, had like 16 batting cages, huge weight room. And because of that connection, he asked me to come out and run it, or run the training there. But that was after I'd been doing the online stuff that I was doing for like two years, making a grand a month. Right. Living on peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> so how do you get into that? Like how did I, what do you mean how did I get into it? No, I'm saying like how did you, how would you get into that? Like if I wanted to... Oh, if you wanted to train? So it's, it's, I mean, it's through my Instagram mostly. Um, so it's like you, Essentially the process is if someone wants to start, there's like a registration that they go through. We hop on a call where I talk to them for 60 minutes, get their story, get what they want to get out of that, like get out of the training, answer any questions that they have. And then we go into like, we're training, most guys train like six, seven days a week. Um, and it just continues on for as long as they want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Can you one day like show me that? I don't have a facility. It's all online right now. Oh, I so thought you said there was one. That was, I did that for six months in, in Springfield. Oh, okay. Yeah. In, Is it Springfield here? Springfield? Oh, like no, it's like, it's like three hours away. Yeah, yeah, I've been in Kansas City for just a little over a month. Originally from Michigan, moved to Springfield in 20, uh, 2019. Are you in college in Michigan? Yeah. Saginaw Valley. Uh, State University to start, and then Cornerstone University after that. Which, how many are you guys like? Do you guys want to go to college, or think about going to college, or like, what's your? Maybe. Maybe. College for football. For what? For football. Yeah. How close are you to doing that right now? Uh, well, I'm trying to get on a tackle team. Uh huh. Because I've been playing flag, but my mom doesn't think I'm ready for tackle. Your so what grade? Uh, seventh. Okay. And then I'm gonna go into high school football, apply for a college, like a good one, maybe OU or Texas Tech. I'm so do you know what you need to do to be able to apply to those schools and get in? Not totally, but yet. But I'm gonna like work with Dan. Work with who? Or work with Dan O'Connor. Yeah. Work. Okay. Um, he'll help me. Yeah. So he's he's also helping me like trying to get into a, like he organized me getting, like me and Dave one being able to get into like a public school football mm -hmm. because we currently don't have a football team or any, or any like sports team. We used to have softball, but I don't know what happens to that. But basically everybody was competitive and quit. Yeah. What, what school is that? You had a softball team where? Uh, Dan was the oh. head coach and uh, okay. like, was running it. This is before my time. This okay. is before Haley. <laughs> <Bailey. laughs> yeah. But so we're working on going. We're going to DeSoto um, Middle School, which is right down the street. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna do. We're gonna go to f do football there. Mm -hmm. Like play games with them, practices with them, and then maybe get into high school and then college. Yeah. And then maybe NFL. Yeah. Maybe. So I mean. What I would say with that is like s start beginning to understand like what it takes in terms of actual physical numbers that you need to do. So like mm -hmm. where do you want, what position do you want to play? 
wide receiver or running back. I haven't totally decided. Or like safety. Yeah. So you know like what your 40 time would need to be to get accepted there? Mm -hmm. Do you know roughly what your 40 time would need to be to get accepted there? Or, or to have a shot there? Uh, not totally. Okay. Yeah. So like those are those are different numbers that would be good to, to start. Because again, like the process that I went through, there are certain mm -hmm. like physical outputs that you have to be able to hit to be able to get looked at by those schools. Yeah. So like now would be a good time to start looking into that. Like a 40 for a wide receiver, I mean, you probably want to be in height. I mean, that's not, I don't work with that much in football, but I think you probably want to be around a 4.6 at four least. 4.6 is pretty fast. Yeah. That's like... To, to get into I'm a really good, 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 good school and, yeah. and have a good shot at for, playing for there. For college at least, 4.6, but for like high school, I think like... That's what I'm saying though, like if you think about by the end of the time that you get out of high school, where you need to be at. Because you yeah. can, right now you have some time. You can put together like five to six years. Of course. To train and get ready for that. Yeah. But like knowing where you need to be at helps because that helps you to set up like, <clears throat> okay, what do I need to do within my train to be able to get to this point that I want to get to? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. there's, be, like going out and playing is, that's extremely beneficial, right? But even a lot of a lot of high schools or a lot of high school coaches, they're, I mean, they're great at football, but like in terms of the training and, and the development, this is just from my experience, like they're not really all that up to speed on things. Yeah. That's why Florida Academy is so successful. Mm -hmm. Like two of their students just got drafted for them. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know they have a really good football team. And my plan, which I was talking to your parents about, was once you start getting up to those grades, maybe sending you there for your last two years or something. Because yeah. we're their sister school, you know? Yeah, like we we're again, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Jesse, oh Jesse Trenchard, and AGT, and all of those guys can just like get you handled. Yeah, they've got some pretty good uniforms too. Like, their uniforms yeah, are like where you're actually thinking more games. Well, I know. Uniforms need to be not very comfortable. And then yeah. he made it more like soaking better. But yeah. I still like the field trip shirts much better. So. Their helmets, their, their helmets are like crazy cool. They've got like I know. visors on them. Yeah. So, and like that, six, took, five, that took that took forever to build. Like, like, what, the Clearwater six, Academy? Five, no, the the football team so that they have. The, they used to be just like, like, like when he did flag football. Mm -hmm. And after 20 years, it's this huge extremely yeah. like that's 20 years it takes time yeah that's where they got get most of their students is through their football program because mm -hmm. people from italy and canada and whatever come <coughs> down and get trained and boom there they go yeah. like uh, haba he just got drafted for the bills i think it was um he's oh, like italian <laughs> yeah the bills are like a not a bad team i mean they used to be Better last season. They have they Josh Allen. Yeah, they have, they have, yeah, they have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And that's, they have that's Steph really good. Yeah. 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 Does that make sense though? Yeah, like, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I can help you out on specifics with that if you want. Like, if you want to talk sometime, I'd be down for that. But. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> are we done? Are we good? Anything uh, else you want to say? I mean. Yeah, just like you guys are young and in a good spot. Like you're in a, I mean, you're in a good place. So don't, like, don't limit even like this million dollar mark or five hundred thousand dollar mark. Like, don't limit yourself just because you don't know that there's more. Because that was a big thing for me. Is growing up, the the situation that I grew up in was like we had, like we lived, we lived good, we lived okay. We kind of like. I don't know, like my dad had a good job that he worked through the week. It was enough to provide for like college and it was enough to provide for food and all that type of stuff. And I didn't really ever experience anything where it's like, okay, there's more that's available. Like I didn't realize how kind of, like almost how bored I was within that because I didn't know that there was something else that I could go get. So like what I would say is try to Put yourself or get yourself out there to experience more so you can see people that are doing things that you didn't even know existed because so if you don't know something exists you can't like you can't put together a plan to go get that 
Like if you don't know, someone can make a billion dollars instead of a million dollars. It's just like you don't know that's available. So put yourself out there, talk to people, put, get yourself into experiences that can help to expand what you know or what you are aware is available for you. Because that will help to then set up like, okay, people can people actually do this or people can actually do this. And I'll even say for myself, before I started my business or as I was starting it, um, me and a friend, we took we took a, a 30 day trip around the country. Like we went went to Minnesota, went out to Washington, down to California, out to North Carolina. Like we just, we visited a bunch of different training facilities before we, before we had anything even started. And going into that trip, what we thought was like, all these training facilities that we, we looked up to and we thought were great, we thought they were gonna be do some, doing something that was just like crazy and above anything that we could ever do. And what happened was when we got there, we're like, okay, they're, they're not actually doing anything that, that, that is that crazy. And this is something that we could actually do. But, and that helped to like flip a switch for me where it was like, okay, I can start doing this and actually start creating it. Whereas before it was like this far off thing that I didn't think I could reach. But without that experience, I wouldn't have had the realization that like, okay, this is something that I can do. So just for you guys, go put yourself out there and, and have different experiences in whatever it is that you want to do. Cool. Cool. Well, my note is pretty much filled up now. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. you guys want to go play with Freddy? Sure. I bet you can meet us all What did you major in? Well, Exercise yeah. science. But it was, I didn't go to school for that. I, I went to school to play sports. I'm the exercise science is probably like 30 years behind. <laughs> Anything that was worth learning. Yeah, you know. Fair enough. Of course. Not really. So, you killed the